Hi, I'm Leo from Boeings and welcome to my 360 degree live stream. What you see is all done inside of Mimo Live with the additions in the new and fresh version 2.2. As you can see, we are able to utilize the full functionality of Mimo Live around me in 360 space. Next to me is a presentation. Mimo Live maps the slides right onto the wall, so it appear to be right here in real life. On the other side is a Twitter wall. Mimo Live grabs the data live from the web and displays them on the wall, all in 360 space. With these features, you can give your audience an amazing and immersive experience for your next live stream. So we're going to take a look at how you can do it with Mimo Live and a 360 camera. Right now, Mimo Live supports the Ricoh Theta S because it's easy to use by delivering the video through only one connection while not breaking your budget. To get the Theta into Mimo Live, just connect it via USB to your Mac. You actually get a better signal by using the HDMI port on the bottom, as well as a capture card, but this will do just fine. To power it on correctly, hold the photo and the power button down until the live LED on the front turns on. If you turn it on normally, it won't output over USB nor HDMI. Next thing is starting Mimo Live and selecting a custom resolution. You need to make sure that the resolution you choose is in the 2 by 1 aspect ratio. I'll take 1440 by 720. Now create a new document. If not already done by Mimo Live, you now need to select the Rico Theta S in your main camera source by selecting it from the drop down. As you can see, the Theta delivers the two camera signals as two individual circles. To process that into a 360 video, we added a special filter. So go back to your source and hit the Filters button. Select 360 Theta S DSKU. This will map the two circles onto a rectangle the way 360 video is usually delivered. Now click the gear next to the Just Edit filter. In the pop-up window, you now adjust the correct area the theater placed these circles. This needs to be done because there might be some inconsistencies in the video feed, but it's done quickly. While adjusting, keep in mind that this de-skewing is hard to do and can't be done perfectly right now, but you should get quite a good signal if adjusted properly. The video of the theater now is mapped onto the rectangle. This is the most common format you deliver 360 video in and is what YouTube and most other platforms expect you to deliver. Another filter to use for 360 is the 360 Adjust Center. If you take a look at the center of your video feed, this portion is what's going to be shown to your audience when they launch the stream, but it might not be the actual point of interest in your video. So with the Adjust Center you can fix this. Edit as a filter and open its settings. There drag the yaw slider to move the center of the video. Mimo Live is now ready to stream to YouTube. To do that, we need to set up a new live event first. Go to your YouTube studio and click on live streaming and events. Create a new one and give it a name. As a type, you have to select custom and under advanced settings, scroll down and select 360 video stream. Click create event and this will bring you to the next window. Here you'll select your bitrate. For me, that's 720p. For the encoder, you need to choose other encoder, which will show you the ingest server and stream key. Simply copy and paste these into the streaming settings of Mimo Live. Make sure to keep the stream key private, because other people could use it to stream you to your account. To go live now, click the streaming button. Go to the top of the page and click live control room. There you have to wait until YouTube receives data from Mimo Live. Then hit preview and click OK. Wait until YouTube detects your stream and click start streaming. Click OK again and you're live. All you have to do now is click View on Watch Page. As you can see, we are live in 360 degrees. Going back to Mimo Live, we also have a new addition for 360 video. It's the 360 Placer, which places the source in 360 space by warping it to the position on the screen. 
The best use case is text. So we add a new text source and fill it with data. Now add a 360 placer and select your text source as the input. It's black so we won't see it in the preview output. Let's make it live and adjust it from here. If we take a look back to YouTube, we can see our newly added placer live. Right now we are only able to get sources into 360 space. So to actually get a layer like the Twitter layer in there, you use Siphon as a workaround. Let's add a Twitter layer to the bottom of our layer stack. And above that a Siphon sender layer. Next step is to add a Siphon receiver source. Now make both live and add another 360 placer layer. Now again select the video input to the new source and now make it live and use these sliders below to adjust the position it's going to be placed in 360 space. Let's take a look back to YouTube and see how our Twitter layer is working in action. I hope you are as excited about this new feature as I am. If you got questions to this or any other topic, head over to boinks.com connect. Stay tuned for more awesome features. See you in the next video.